Sorry, I want to be very brief. Uh, I just wanted to kind of expand on what uh, some people have said here. But uh, to me, what uh, probably was on an MDH means, I want to be kind of brief, and is uh, the mentors that I had in my life. And it's, uh, I think it's something that I can now pass on to my children, to my grandchildren, and it's like thousands, it you know, multiplies many times now. And you know, we come from different back backgrounds and many times we didn't have the mentors to succeed in life. And I think I had that opportunity to do that and I'm very grateful for that. And that's all I want to say. Thank you. It's about um, how we are a family and how he saw all of us as his family and how his message was to stay united, but at the same time as in a family, how he treated everybody as an individual, how he um, was able to give everybody the feeling in like five minutes that he was something special, um, that um, he was not only part of a big group, but also an individual that was meaningful to others and that could do something meaningful. Um, my, I personally met Father Wesson like, uh, I think one minute, when in 2002, when I was applying for volunteer and um, invited by the German office to um, come to the annual meeting and he was there, so I was, um, he was sitting in his chair and I was just I just walked over and he was like, Hello, I'm Dr. I'm going to volunteer in Nicaragua and he's like, Oh, that's nice. So that's how I met Father Wesson. There's not too much that you can pull out of that, actually. <laughs> but um, <laughs> then I went to Nicaragua and I was a volunteer. And that's um and I met my now fiance, um, the father of my son. And he grew up in NPH Nicaragua. And when he um, was 18, 19, he was kicked out because a Pequena got pregnant. So of course, like the general rule of NPH, everybody knows it. A family has rules, so he was asked to leave the family and start his own family. Um, a little while after Father Wesson came and visited NPH Nicaragua, and he asked, like, so where's Ronald? They were like, oh, well, Father, he had to leave because this and this happened. Um, Miriam is pregnant, so um, we asked him to leave the home. He said, no, he's, a son, he's one of my sons. Bring him back, get him a job, but he has to come back to NPH. So he was a father in that sense because he was taking individual decisions. He was not saying, okay, these are the rules and that's how it is for everybody, no matter what happens. He, I think what I learned, um, or what we can all learn about it, is that he deeply trusted in the good, in that case of my future husband. Um, and even though he had done a big mistake, he had broken rules, um, he lived the, the story of the lost son. He, he said, okay, like, he did this mistake. He will not be, again, a pequeño, as all his other friends, but he will still be a member of our family and um, actually forced, I think, the former national directors to give him a job. So that's why I could meet him a week, one year later 
and that's why now we're living together. His son, that was the reason why he was kicked off, out, me, him, this little boy and me. So without Father Watson being the person who he was, I probably wouldn't be here, he for sure wouldn't be here, and uh, my whole life would be different. And that's why I'm very, very, very thankful to Father Watson. So we'll do two more for now, and then maybe we can carve later on some more time. Uh, Frank, and then uh, Elias, yeah, that's right. Frank? Father Rich earlier told you the story about uh, going to Austria and using a letter, a picture in one of our mailings, uh, showing Father Wasson in the Franciscan habit. Well, uh, of course, he told about how Father Wasson uh, was embarrassed because the newspapers were printing that uh, Father Wasson was a fraud, that he wasn't a priest. Well, Father Rick stopped the story uh, at that point because he had made his point on his story. But, uh, <laughs> but I wanted to tell you the ending of the story. We had gone to Austria for the first time, and this was a test mailing. We were trying to find out if the people of Austria were interested in an orphanage which was 5,000 miles away in Mexico. And uh, it was strictly a test. And uh, uh, we, we uh, came across this catastrophe, which we didn't anticipate. It, didn't anticipate. Uh, we did use this picture with the Father Watson with the, uh, the habit on, and uh, the newspapers checked with the Franciscan headquarters in Rome, and they found out that they didn't have a priest by the name of uh, William Price Watson. So they determined that Father Watson was a fraud. So we immediately took the newspapers to court and sued them, and we got a quick decision. We got some monetary remuneration, but best of all, the papers were required to print a favorable article about Father Watson and the West Crispicanus Hermanos. And from that on, all of Austria knew of an NBH and Father Watson. <laughs> That was our test mailing. <laughs> and it, the return on it was greater than anything that we had ever gotten. And so we were greatly encouraged, and of course we opened up a full-blown office in Austria. And so encouraged were we that later that year we started in Germany. And from there on we went throughout Europe. So that's the the end of a, a story that looked like it was a catastrophe, but it turned into a blessing. <laughs> As you know, Polly and I, my wife, traveled with Father Watson for about 35 years, raising funds for uh, little brothers and sisters. Uh, I was about the same age as Father Watson. Uh, but our backgrounds were very different. Uh, Father used to ask me his opinion on many things, and uh, I always responded from a practical point of view, because I was a businessman. And Father's vision was as a visionary. His vision was to help as many children in the world as possible, and that's the way he thought. Uh, he would ask my opinion, I'd give it to him, but most of the time, why he went and did what he felt <laughs> was for the best of the children. I, I guess the best example of that is that when we went to Nicaragua and uh, settled on the island of Ometepe, uh, I was violently opposed to the move uh, because of the volcano 
and uh, the cost uh, of expenses on the island and so forth. But Father Wasson could not see this, and I couldn't see it at the time. But the reason that he wanted to go there was that he wanted to try to isolate the children from the outside world, uh, crime, uh, uh, drugs, and so forth. And he wanted to have the children free of that. Uh, and he accomplished it, but eventually these other things that were the practical items uh, required that we leave the island. But here again, why he could only think uh, for the benefit of the children. You might say he had a one-track mind. Uh, that may sound derogatory, but uh, his mind was for the benefit of the children. 